Hello everybody, this is Anthony, and today I'm interviewing YouTuber, music fanatic, person on their rapper journey, Bob the Pop-Up. How are you doing, Bob? I'm doing well, man. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I've been really looking forward to interviewing you. Ever since I saw the late registration, I was like, I gotta talk to this guy. He must be like <laughs> a great guy to talk to. So, how does it feel like, like one year, like, you know, on this YouTube journey? It's, it's... There's a lot of feelings that go with it. You know, it's it's been surprising. It's been fast. That first year was just fast, man. Yeah, you blew up uh, like I, on the spot. Well, in I think I think with the the schedule that I have of doing an album every Friday, so I'm always looking forward to Friday. Of course, everybody's looking forward to Friday, right? And then, you know, I listen to the album over the weekend, and then you know, Wednesday I do additional thoughts, and that shows up pretty fast. And then it's another Friday, and so it's just the weeks just fly by. So that first year went by really fast. Yeah. And like, I don't like, I know you said, like, I guess one of your previous videos about like, it's been one year and that you just, you know, went through so many, like, I, it's been, it's been crazy to see how, because I remember when you did the late registration video and that's like ever since I've been like watching then. And that was like, I think almost six months ago, if I recall, like it was a while. Well, ago. Been a, yeah. It's been a little while, probably maybe even eight months ago. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just remember like that video popping up and like Rocker reacts to like rap <laughs> albums, and I'm like, oh, this sounds really interesting. <laughs> so like, did that just like the whole YouTube thing? You know, did it just come out of your head? Like, you know what, this looks fun. I'll just react because I know you said like you were doing like video games before, or like you're doing like YouTube videos like video games or something. Yeah, I had I I had a channel before that's called Bob the Witch Doctor, and I played Diablo three. and In Diablo three, one of the classes is a witch doctor, so it was just this channel name was kind of a play off of that channel name, because uh, my son calls me Pop Up. I was like, all right, I'll just be Bob the Pop Up instead of Bob the Witch Doctor. And then in terms of doing you know, reactions, I've always enjoyed reaction videos and stuff, but sometimes I get annoyed by reaction videos because you can tell the people. It seems I don't I don't want to say like they're faking it, but maybe they're overreacting or they're reacting in such a way where it seems like they're not really paying attention to what they're reacting to. They're just kind of putting on a more of a show. Mm -hmm. And I never liked that. I there's something very special about somebody who really connects with music that you love and watching it happen in real time. That's really yeah. a cool thing. And I I being you know from the rock side and and watching that stuff it. It's I see all kinds of videos of people who listen to rap and then they listen to rock for the first time and they're blown away. And there's a channel called Lost in Vegas that I really like. And they, they did that. Uh, there's another channel I've been watching lately, too, called Brad and Lex. They're a couple. They're really cool. And they, they do that. And so I was like, you know, I see this all the time on the rock side because I, I didn't listen to rap at the time. I had no idea if that was a thing on the rap side where people for rock come over to rap. So I was like, I'm just going to do it. I've never listened to rap. I've never, well, I mean, aside from Dr. Dre and Eminem, I listened to them a little bit beforehand. But I've never taken the time to just sit down and listen to these albums, these songs, these artists, what they have to say, what their perspective is, stuff like that. And so it's like, yeah, everybody else is doing it. Why not? I can do it too, you know? Yeah, like I, I can tell from your reactions, you're very genuine and like excited. And that gets me pumped up because like, you know, like you do capture like the first listening experience, which is kind of like some people like, dude, I wish I remember first time listening to like Blonde or Good Kid, Mad City or whatever. And like, yeah. you know, like watching you do that, especially with like albums like from Peggy or Kanye or Kendrick, it's like exciting. So I'm like always pumped, especially for Life of Pablo. I've been waiting <laughs> since day one. I'm like, I can't wait for him to like listen to like Famous or Waves or like freestyle yeah. for like i just can't wait like that was the one i was yeah. just waiting for where did you get all excited when i said at the end that it was my it, it was kanye's best album yes so far? yes because i agree i agree <laughs> and i was like yes he knows what's up he knows what's up <laughs> for a while awesome. it was late registration but like after like listening a lot in college i was like you know what maybe maybe like pablo is the best it's kanye as in a, a musical idea to like the maximum and like that's like yeah. it's the best representation of kanye and his art and like the way he approaches the things and constructs things yeah that's a great way of putting it too and but you know late registration is also just really good that's yeah. a really good album yeah like i remember you were like just vibing so hard too it was like was it not last it was uh 
gone. Yes, it was gone with the, the whole like one. cello thing. And I'm like, yeah, he knows yeah. what's up. I was just like, I think the one, the one song after that album where I'm like, this guy needs to react. It was like Hey Mama because that thing is just so touching and everything. It's like, beautiful, man. I I almost cry every time I hear that song. Yeah, it's like so same here. Beautiful. It, it's yeah. just like tugs on your heartstrings because I think of my mom and everything. And yeah. Like, even like not even my mom, but like like not also my mom, but also the people who have done the same thing, who have gone through those hardships to take care of you, provide for like my father or my grandma. Like those people, I think about, especially been away from them for a while because I went to college. And I was like, listen to Hey Mom. I'm like, like, hold, like, hold, like, listen to like, oh, Kanye. Um. Well, and too, there's something cool about the idea of really famous rapper singing about a song, a song about how much he loves his mom. When I don't know how it is now, but when I was a kid and kind of growing up and teenagers and stuff, like, you, you, you oh, you're a mama's boy or whatever. Like, if you talked about, you know, loving your parents, you got made fun of, right? Yeah. You know, you're not cool, whatever. And so I just like that idea, too. This this very famous rapper, great album. He's got all these great songs. And here's just a song to his mom for his mom. That's that's awesome. Especially in a time where I was, like, very macho. It was, like, very, like, yeah. and, like, oh, you yeah. can't show feelings. You gotta be hard for the streets and everything. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, it's a very cool song. Yeah, I mean, but back to like every, like your reactions and everything. I like I, I I know like I think there was one of the YouTuber who was like metalhead reacts. It was like or like this heavy chugging guy or whatever. There's a bunch of them out there. I mean, there's all kinds of reaction channels, and that's something that's been neat for me is that there's all these reaction channels out there. And slowly but surely, I feel like I'm I'm bubbling my way up towards oh, yeah. the surface, you know, and so. That's neat in the sense of when I first made the channel, I, I made some decisions at the very beginning of what I was going to do and what I was not going to do. You know, certain things I don't do. Like, you're not going to see some cheesy ass thumbnail on my video. I'm not going to do crap like that. I don't like that. With the red arrows I, and the circles. Or right. Whatever. And the emojis. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't like that. And then the other thing, too, something I think is key to the video is it's pretty subtle. And then, but the YouTube people don't get to experience it. it. It's more of a Patreon thing. Is I do it all uncut. There's no edits at all. And I wanted to do that for two reasons. One, I think it's very it makes it more genuine that way. It's easier for people to go, okay, this is real. This is happening. Rather than when I watch a reaction video and it's cut, I'm like, what did you just take out right there? Yeah. Like, did you did you just re react because your first react wasn't as good as you wanted it to be, and so now you had to do it over, and now you had to. I you know I'm always getting a little suspicious when there's when there's a lot of edits in a reaction video. But like then too, there, oh go ahead. Oh, I'm, I was just oh the, the second thing too is like if I if I do this all uncut, it's going to force me to practice my speech, and it's going to force me to focus on on slowing down just a little bit, and and trying to articulate my thoughts a little bit more before I just like spill everything out of my mouth because. Speaking is a skill, and I've always had a lot of appreciation for people who can speak well. And it's hard, and it does take oh, practice. Yeah. And so I was like, well, it'll force me to practice, and it has. I've gotten better because of it. No, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I don't know if you have looked at my channel or anything, but the way that my channel is is that I want to talk to artists and, like, interview people and, like, people who I see as, like, a part of this, not just internet culture, but just this culture, this present-day culture in general. I kind of want to document it. And so, like, I, I, like, I see your YouTube channel as, like, one of, like, the, like, I see it as the face of, like, reactions and, like, you know, 2020 and beyond and just, like, this authentic, That's like, cool. yeah, like, kind of like this thing where it's, like, you were just an example of somebody who were just opening up to something that's completely, like, unknown, something that I didn't live and just, like, enjoying the ride and loving everything when it comes to knowing about it, like, you know, having that experience or, like, yeah, and that's, that's exactly what it's been too. I mean, that's a great way to describe it because that's exactly what it's been. It's been it's been a great ride in terms of hearing these incredible albums. It's been a great ride in having my perspective, my misconceptions, my preconceived notions, all these lies I had in my head about rap and what people said in rap and what the songs were about, the source. It was all bullshit. I mean, I my idea of rap was so off base. So it's been great having all of these wrong ideas shoved out <laughs> and instead filled with incredible music. 
And then, too, meeting people on the way has been fantastic. You know, I, I never used to use Discord before. Now I'm on it all the time. There's all these people in here that I know. We chat all the time and seeing comments and stuff. And I get these incredible messages on Twitter sometimes, just incredibly supportive, loving, happy people. It's just, it's amazing. And and so, yeah, it's just been a fantastic ride because of it. Yeah, I, I've seen the community, like your community and just the music community, like reaction community, especially like turning the tables. Like you guys are just so supportive and just like, yeah, he's getting into that music. That's rad and everything. Like that, that's great. I love seeing that stuff. I mean, yeah, and I it, can it, like, oh, go ahead. I was just saying it is, it's awesome. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, and honestly, I can deeply relate to like, where you were coming from because I was a classic rock guy before I ever got into rap and I had those preconceived notions and like about rap music and everything or whatever. I, it all started, it was like, I think it was like my uncle Henry and we were in the car and he was like playing that one Tupac song, like, uh, what was it like Dear Mama or whatever? It was like, oh, yeah. I, yeah. And I, and he was like rapping it uh, like well, after like dropping off my cousins and he was I'm like, oh, this is, this is tight. Like, I like this. And he's like, you never listen to Pac Man, like because he's from he's from like uh he's from uh L.A. You know, like West Side and everything. Right, right. And so he's like, you haven't listened to Pac. What are you doing? This is your like not heritage, but like like this is where you come from. Because I I was from L.A. but I moved to Arizona, so like it was a kind of a distant. But he's like trying to keep that into his like life and everything. Growing up in L.A. in like the '90s and the '80s. Yeah. And so that kind of like, ever since then, I just kind of been a constant flow of like rap artists during high school, like Tyler, the creator, Kendrick, Peggy, Kanye, especially Kanye and like Kendrick. That's why I just like seeing you going from like section 80 all the way to big steppers. It was like, he did it. He did it. He did one, like one of those things where like you captured in real time what I yeah. felt in high school. And it was just like an amazing just sight to see. Yeah, and that, I mean, it is it is fun to just kind of pause and think back of, I still remember hearing Section 80 the first time, and, you know, and I actually want to touch on that real quick, too, because you said, that's a comment I get a lot, man, I wish I could hear this album again for the first time, and what's cool is I get to do that, and in a sense, I can let other people almost hear it for the first time again, but because I am doing it on YouTube and, and in this manner, I do remember my first listens, and I've never had that before, you know, you grow up with albums and yeah, they just become like part of your blood. You know, you know, oh, these yeah. songs up and down and all this stuff, stuff. But yeah, you don't remember that first time. But now I do. I remember first time Section 80. And I remember it was still really early in my journey. And so I was still getting, you know, trying to get comfortable with rap and stuff. But I remember thinking, you know, this is like his debut album. This is a really good debut album. Like, this is really strong. There's some great songs. Like, Keisha's song is really good. Rigor Mortis is really good. Cushion Corinthians is really good. Like, these are great songs, man. And this is where he's beginning. Holy shit. What's going to be like on the other side? Of oh, the yeah. Like, I remember seeing that moment in, uh, was it, a Swimming Pools, where you're like, this is so good. This is amazing. Like, I just, like, honestly, <laughs> there was, like, that one point, like, where you like an artist, you're going to the discography, and there's that one exception point where you're, like, instantly, like, it just, like, in, like, this mind in your, like, has that clarity. Like, I love, I love this. Like, I love it. And I'm like, you just hit it right on the eye when I just remember like seeing that part in that Good Kid, Mad City like reaction. I was like, yes, yes. That was a great album. Great album. I was God. actually listening to like earlier today while I was making some soup. Yeah, it's so good. Such a good album, man. And what one thing, it's just a subtle little tool in the album, but it, it pulled me in perfectly with all those little voicemails from his parents. Because oh, yeah. me being older and having my own son, it put me in the setting of not being the good kid, but of being a parent of a good kid in a mad city and having all those worries and fears. And it was just incredible, incredible how he did that. And I honestly found it very like beautiful and touching when you were going through like your additional thoughts and why the phrase like sing my song, it's, it's oh. not for you. Like that, that was honestly like very touching. And then like, that's what I love about your channel is just, all you know not just like feelings but it's all authenticity it's all honesty and i just really appreciate that from your channel and, and this is what i love from the community i can do that you know i can i can be open and express these emotions and people not only do they connect with that but they're like i did the same thing 
<laughs> I I cried my eyes out at Hey Mama. I cried my eyes out on seeing my song. It's all for you, and I'm dying to think. Yeah, it's it's cool, and I think what's really neat is, especially in this day of internet culture and how it seems just like how ugly things are online. We can still find these little pockets yeah. where people are still being people and they're still being like open and true to who they are. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I I've seen some really toxic communities, and when I saw like. The whole reaction came and it was like this be my life. I was like, oh, what is this? It's so like, <laughs> it's so like nice and everything. It was like, it just came out yeah. of nowhere. It's true. Yeah, it is true. Like if you're not used to it, it would, I can see somebody being like jaded or cynical about it. Like there's no way these people are real. Like this is yeah. just, it's almost like satire or a parody or something like, but no, and this is, and it's something that is special within the music community. The people who love music, man. We can all get together. Yeah. And, and you don't even have to like the same songs. If you just love music, you can sit down and talk to somebody else who loves music. No problem. No problem. Yeah, definitely. It's just kind of one of those like social things that humans have always done. Like, because when it comes to like painting, it's very personal. You sit by yourself in a room and you dip your brush and you focus on this one painting. But when you're like, I don't know, playing in a band or you're playing in front of people or doing like a performance, it's like this social like thing that yeah. connects everybody together and i just find that yeah. like like that's a special thing about music it just connects everything you know like in a rhythm or in like in a voice or in, it just connects you it just bonds you together yeah or when you know you click with this song and it just you know for whatever reason your time in your life or whatever you're going through and that song just just connects with you and then you meet somebody else who's like i had the same thing with the same songs <laughs> It's like we were living together, you know, parallel yeah, yeah. lines, side like, by side. It was like a shared moment of just like understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's incredible. Yeah. Have you like <laughs> this is a kind of a funny question. Has Peggy ever hit you back up? No, not yet. No. no. I actually yeah, so I was just we the conversation that I'm gonna post on Monday, uh, we were talking about Peggy and yeah, I gotta I gotta keep track. I think right now it's tough because I'm pretty sure he's on tour. I think it's but I do need to right just, now. I got to keep trying to reach out and get him on because I think it would be so much fun. I I, I know. Like, I watch his interviews and I'm like, I honestly just want to sit down with him and play, like, video games while talking about, like, (laughs) rap. Like, he just seems that type of guy. And I want to interview him, like, next or just he's just someone on my, like, bucket list of people who want to interview. Like, I bought, I, I was like, there was no way in my mind that this, I thought this was possible, but I bought tickets to the new Kendrick Lamar concert here in Phoenix. And I'm like, nice. I am thinking, should I go? I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to send an email to PG Lang and be like, can I interview Kendrick? <laughs> like, you might as well. I mean, all they're going to do is say no. Most yeah, likely. Like that's but the, yeah. That's the same result as if you do nothing at all. But now if you do something, you got that slight chance. Well, yeah, maybe it'll happen. You have no idea. You know, it, it, and that's something I've learned, too, in this last year of the channel is I actually said this the other day. I didn't realize I was going to be like so insightful. I said in Discord, I said, I'm I'm believing a lot more in the things that can happen and a lot less in the things that can't happen. Because if you just start doing stuff, it's a it's kind of amazing how much traction will start to build if you stick with it. And so, yeah, dude. Yeah, go for it. I mean, why not? You've seen Nardwar, right? You know, like Nardwar. The yeah, I've seen him, yeah. I don't know if you've seen his TED talk, but in his TED talk, he was always like, I got able to speak with Kurt Cobain, Jay-Z, like Pharrell, because I asked, just do it yourself. Yeah. And that like, ever since then, I'm like, you know what, that's what I'm gonna do. And that's kind of like one of the things that motivated me to start this channel, just ask people like, the worst thing could say is just say no. But like, if it does happen, then like, you know, I, I have the opportunity, this incredible opportunity to like talk to people like you, and you know like other artists like i have like a whole bunch of people that i want to interview but i'm pretty sure they're gonna say no like kanye or whatever like (laughs) he's probably not gonna respond or anything but i'm like whatever i i tried well the thing is too i think with with these bigger artists the hard thing is is they're just so busy oh yeah and so i i honestly believe like somebody with kanye or kendrick or anybody honestly i feel like those are the kind of guys if they had the time, they probably would say, yeah, it's just they don't really have the time. That's what's so tough, you know? Yeah. Um, but still, if you just keep trying, you just keep trying. You know, that's all you can do. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say, like, I'm not going to stop. But it, it's something I will like to like, 
pursue to sit down with like the man and like the myth the legend even though he says i'm not your <laughs> saver i know kendrick i know but it's so hard not to see that like you made this incredible body of work and not like you know freak out about it because it's just so amazing it is amazing i i look at kendrick's work and i i think like what are they going to talk about 25 years from now 50 years from now what are they going to look at when they look at kendrick's work you know because it is interesting like it was really fun for me to be able to do that album in real time and be with the community as we were all listening to it together i loved that but now i'm in this reverse spot where because everything else i've been listening to it's been around for a while opinions have settled and people have kind of figured out whether you know what makes something so great and and, and so on and like right now we just don't have that with big steppers <laughs> we don't I, have i know you, you were so lucky that you didn't have to wait five years <laughs> <I> know, <right? laughs> there were so many memes just going like yo kendrick is just starving his fans like same like, <laughs> thing with kanye or whatever and we're seeing one like joke that's sort of, like what was it I was like, I can see why Kanye dropped out. He never turned in his work, like, on time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But I I almost, I don't know, like, I, I'm so used to hearing albums that have been out for so long. I almost kind of miss the idea of people having these detailed talks and discussions about why something's so great and uh you know that dissect podcast that guy puts out just incredible incredible podcast really really getting into the details and stuff but i look at mr morale the big steppers and i i feel like it's it's going to change things but i also feel like it's going to take a while for that change to kind of ripple through i like i feel like there's a 16 year old kid somewhere listening to that album right now and 10 years from now that kid is going to blow up because he heard that album and he went i got i just got to be true I got to yeah. be true and he's going to make amazing music while he or she or whoever, because of what Kendrick did in that album. No, for sure. Like you see that a lot, you know, like, um, I remember like people listening to like T-Pav and just like years later, like, Oh, we finally, after like five years of just like wrangling through this, like an onion, like we finally got the gritty, like details. Like I didn't, it took me like three years to finally like, get everything like sorted out like okay lucy's lucifer the yams is this and all that other stuff it, it it's like that's what i love about kendrick it's like you just dig deep and dive and i honestly think that like i told this to my cousin and he's a huge kendrick fan too and i told him like 30 years from now people are gonna look at kendrick lamar as like michael jackson or almost even as like bigger as michael jackson like he just has that batting average of just of an icon of like someone with the message with someone who just has amazing work in like the world and has changed the world because all those protests that happened in like the summer of like last year and like they were all singing all right and i can never think of another time when like people were doing that like only kendrick yeah. brought that change yeah and you know you get the the effect too of like i always think about Jimi hendrix you know i'm sure you know of Jimi. well yeah you listen to class rock yeah, yeah. And you know, obviously he died when he was really young and he didn't really put out a whole lot of music, but he was so phenomenal and influential on the guitar. And we've had so much music since Jimi Hendrix up until now that you can look back and you can you can kind of trace the influences. You know, you can see that looking back. And I feel like Big Steppers, well, I mean, I'm not necessarily Big Steppers, but Kendrick. I think Kendrick's going to do that same thing where... 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you can, you'll be able to trace back these influences. And I don't know, maybe that's not as big of a deal because that's what hip hop is, right? Just this constant evolution that's coming off of everything that came before and growing from that, which is what makes the genre so great. But man, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, what he said and how he said it, it was monumental. In yeah. my opinion, monumental. It was like these monoliths or like that are just put in, in like the ground. I honestly feel like every single album or project he dropped even singles like the hard part five or like like those other songs i feel like they're just these huge landmarks he's just like putting in the ground for like you know for like future music and i remember fantano saying on like his review of t-pad that 
to Pimp a Butterfly and Kendrick Lamar with that album in 2015 has laid a musical benchmark for like modern music and for like the future of what hip hop will be. And honestly, it bleeds even like in more like not just hip hop, but like in other genres, too, because I know that there are some people who are just on the opposite side of the spectrum when it comes to music. Like they could be a Norwegian, like black metal guy or whatever. And they're like, oh, yeah. I love Kendrick, man. Like <laughs> it's hard to deny, man. I mean. If you just take the time to listen to the AI, it's really, it's it's hard to believe somebody could, <clears throat> with an actual open mind, sit and listen to Kendrick and go, and not to say that they have to love him, but to sit there and go, no, this isn't any good. Like, there's nothing here. I, I just can't picture a person actually doing that because I, he's just extremely good at what he yeah does. it's kind of hard to deny it's like yeah. it's almost impossible it's like almost futile to be like this is nothing this is not gonna change it's almost impossible to fight that because you have so many examples of like what makes him great and what makes his work great and what makes his work matter and how it would change things yeah yeah and I honestly feel about that, like, I don't know if you can see this where I'm coming from, but I honestly feel like that's the same thing with Peggy. Like, the way that he makes music, and, like, I remember, like, hearing on that, I think it was on the Talib Kweli, like, We The People interview, where he's like, I make music, but the music I put out is just what sounds normal. Like, the stuff that I keep in the bowl <laughs> is, like, bonger. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. People will eat that up. Like, Oh, dude. I would love to hear the shit that's crazy to Peggy. I would love to hear what it is. It's, I cannot like probably, imagine. It's like, probably just probably. a mess. Like he probably just takes like a grinder on a record and just like who fucking knows what kind of shit he's doing. But yeah, I would love to hear what Peggy's got that's just stored away. Yeah, like I remember he's like his like techniques are really weird with sampling. Like he said, like yeah, I put like a microphone through the exhaust pipe in my truck and like put something through like so I can capture that. I'm like who does this and i i don't know if you are really familiar with like uh brian wilson but when he says that on cornballs like i'm the black brian wilson like that honestly perfectly describes who he is like just this guy who's very inventive and just original and just tries everything and like ju just to make something like complex and like complete yeah i don't know if you saw i think it was on twitter a couple of days ago he did a he made a sample he took a sample of a tree a tree, <laughs> a tree. He, there's pictures of him out, out, out uh, in the world. Oh wait, I, guess. I, I remember that post. Yeah, he's, he's like, he's yeah. like Europe or he's, something, and he's like, just yeah. has a microphone to a tree. <laughs> I'm like, how are you gonna? How I was like, I don't know, like pitch shift it or something, or like hear the cells like divide or whatever. It's so great. It's so great. Yeah, and I like him and like Danny Brown and Injury Reserve. I feel like those guys are gonna pave the way for like the future and like when it comes to like new face because i know death grips did their thing in like the early 2010s and like they kind of, i don't know if they're going to release any more material i hope they will because i love death grips but yeah. i could see them having that influence and pushing rap into more experimental and just like um new territory like you know what i'm saying like sonically and like production yeah. like because when i, I, I think Oh, go ahead. I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of room there because that was one thing when I was listening to a whole lot of red, it took me a while to get used to that sound. And then once I did, I started to think about what I was hearing and like, God, now you just need to put metal in here because I feel like there's plenty of room for that kind of sound, these you know, metal sounds. And I feel like that would mesh so well with somebody like Playboy Cardi and Whole Lot of Red or or whatever he does next. Because Death Grips. They're not quite, I wouldn't say they're metal, but they're they're really getting into that loud area that metal occupies, and it just works really well. Yeah, and one thing I really discovered is that, like, trap as a template, I don't know how, like, a lot of people say it's, like, really simple and derivative or whatever, like, it's very just, like, bare bones, but I think that's an advantage because since it's just so bare bones, you can add anything you want on top of it and just, like, you know, blends into something new. Because when I heard a whole lot of red, it was like, it just like so loud and like almost industrial in a way. Like, it was, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and I remember hearing like other like acts or whatever, like use like the trap sound, but either through like a psychedelic thing or a very like dream thing. I don't know if you're familiar with like, cloud rap or whatever, but like it's it's a style of rapper, it's almost ambient. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it's like 
Yeah. yeah. It's like very poppy. It, it's kind of like, I don't know, Peggy, you'll find this offensive. It's kind of almost like corn balls in a way or whatever. He, you know, like, <laughs> it's not cloud wrap or whatever. Like, it, it's, it's like very ethereal, you know, it's like very yeah. ethereal. And it just has like a crisp tone to it. Because I remember hearing the second part of Nights on like Frank Ocean oh, yeah. and just like the, yep. that was the crispest like 808s and hi-hats I've ever heard in a song it's like <laughs> so clean it's like serene yeah well I I'm, I, I mean Dial It is kind of in that space too right it's yeah like, that one's pretty ethereal and spacey and loose like that like I remember listening to like Long Time and Shoot and being like this is amazing like it's just so like <laughs> nice <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really cool, and it's just neat to see so much variety existing underneath the umbrella of hip hop. It's it's incredible how much range exists. Yeah, and I feel like Tyler the Creator is kind of like the face of all that stuff, like combining like R and B and like really smooth stuff. I remember he said that somewhere in the vault he had like a Bossa Nova album or whatever since like 2013. And I'm like, dude, like I heard like sweet i thought you wanted to dance and ever since then i'm like dude you need to do more stuff like this yeah. it's just so good. that's a great song such a great song. i think it is my favorite tire of the creator song to yeah. be honest it's really good it's really good i put on i put on call me to get lost uh the other day just kind of go through it again because it's been a little while and when that one came on i was like oh yeah that's right this is a great song <laughs> yeah like i think with tyler it's just like he makes songs just like a really good summary vibe. I think that's his like favorite season. And like that makes yeah. sense. Because like it's so blazing hot outside in Arizona, like tires melt. But you just like bumping some like like Tyler and I'm like <laughs> it, it's just cool. It's you know, like we're 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 like vibing out and everything. I guess it's great. Yeah. And I hope like he's just gonna be on that same lane as Kendrick and Peggy and Connie just paving the way for like more music and just expanding hip hop as a genre because 40 years ago when it was in its infancy it was just like you know sugar hill gang and salt and pepper and all that other stuff and it's like it just gone so far it's crazy like i was thinking about that and i was talking to about it uh to a friend about it too about how you know i, I listen to rock and classic rock and 80s and 90s and you know now we are here in the 2020s and it's been a lot of great music that's come out, and I'm continually impressed that people can take drums, bass, guitar, vocals, and still make something new with it. Because it, I, my brain always thinks, well, that's it. Like we've made it all, right? <laughs> and some stuff sounds similar to other stuff, but whatever. And then I look at hip hop, and what's happened in hip hop over 40 years, and it's like, holy shit! Like this thing is just constantly evolving, 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 and changing and growing and changing in this way and that way. And it's it's incredible how much the music has changed in such a short period of time. Yeah, like it's insane because rock had more of like a hundred years to go like do that, or like you know, like early rockabilly stuff, and then you get into the sixties and seventies. Like it's just kind of like the slow, gradual thing. Because I think in the eighties and the nineties, that's when we just started like splurfing off into like a bajillion subgenres, but oh, like for hip hop. No, for or for what? like rock music, like in oh, the eighties okay, and nineties, yeah. like you had math rock or post rock or whatever, like post. Yeah, rock. right. And you got the hair bands, you got grunge, you got progressive rock. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I feel like it took them for a while. Like it was just kind of like this, and then like in the eighties and I was like, <sighs> and for like hip hop, it was just like half of that, and just even a higher result. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible how much it's changed. And I think the strength of hip hop and its evolution like that comes from sampling. And you can just pull from all these different things all the time and take the sample and twist it around and, and break it and rearrange it and make it something completely new. It's really, it's really incredible because it's it's neat in the sense of how it evolves the music, but then you can also get like a sneak peek into the musicians that inspired that artist because they're pulling these samples. Yeah, like for sure. Like, I know that I honestly feel like ever since like the second greatest instrument or the, the greatest instrument to come after the, the uh, electric guitar is like the sampler. It's just how like changing it is because you can make an entire like ambient album or like a, just through sampling and it just constantly evolves and changes through like you can do a simple four like four bar you know the loop or whatever but then you can do this entire like compositional piece just by sampling like a tree yeah i listened to uh somebody linked me the 
the album and introducing by dj shadow oh, yeah. which is a complete sample and i i listen to it and i love that album it's incredible that it's all samples it just it blows my mind but it's it's a fantastic listen it's really good yeah like sampling like if mf doom didn't have sampling i don't know what he'd do just be a cosplayer on the street or whatever yeah right <laughs> like yeah. It, it's just insane how things have just changed do you think that there's some point where you're going to be like, you know what, like, let's go beyond rap, or is that going to be like some back in a rock or something? Because there's some rock music lately that I feel like people just don't, I mean, for some people, but in the underground that are just like reinventing like rock music in a really creative and crazy way. I think it would be kind of cool to react to rock because uh, while I consider myself to still be a rocker and a lot of the music I listen to is that, I still haven't heard all all of it, you know, and especially recently, like newer bands, I don't have a pulse on any of that stuff. You know, I'm, I'm kind of that guy where it's like, OK, I still listen to Tool. I still listen to Queens of the Stone Age. You know, I, I listen to the bands that I know. And every now and then I'll discover someone new, but it's pretty rare. And so, yeah, it would be cool to kind of hear new rock and to do it in this format, because when I listen to stuff that's new just on my own. I kind of listen to it like everybody else does. You, know, you just put it on and listen to it. I don't sit with the lyrics like I do on the channel. And so it would be neat to have a rock experience of that. And then two, you know, a lot of people have mentioned yeah, getting outside of the hip hop genre. And, you know, I've never heard Michael Jackson's Thriller. That's a huge album. I've never listened to it. Really? I've never heard Janet Jackson. I've never heard Whitney Houston's album. I've never, you know, there's all these like massive, massive artists that I've never listened to. And it would be fun to get out of that. But right now, for now, it's going to be hip hop just because there's still a mountain of albums that I feel like I need to get through before I can go, okay, I can start dabbling in other areas now. Yeah. And do you see like that going, you know, as far as the channel is going so far, just rap reactions and, you know, for like, let's say a year later, where do you see yourself? That sounds like an interview question, like a real interview, like formal <laughs> question, but... <laughs> Yeah, but I'm gonna, like something. generally ask you like where do you see this is like going because i can see you getting like you know taking off you know like getting uh like advertisement money and everything if it, i mean if it did blow up i would i would go full-time i would go full-time i would love to go full-time um i'm at the point now where i feel like it wouldn't even really feel like a job like i have a job a full-time job and sometimes i come home from work and i'm so tired <laughs> it's like you know doing stuff for the channel there's a lot involved there too and it would still be a lot of work but if i went full time i could probably do two albums a week i could probably do more conversation things i could probably do live streaming like there's a lot more i could do involving the channel as well which i feel like would help it grow even more so right now i kind of envision myself as that person who i've got like one foot on the dock and the other foot's on the boat and the boat's starting to drift away a little bit. And like at some point, I'm going to have to decide, am I going to be on the dock or am I going to be on the boat, you know? Yeah, that's like um, a big decision a lot of YouTubers make is like, do I just jump and like go for that yeah. leap of faith? And the hardest part is I, uh, the job that I have, I make good money. It's not like I have a shitty job and I don't make any money because then it'd be easy to walk. But like I make good money. I have good benefits. I like what I do. I work for good people. They actually take care of their employees, you know. So it, it is hard to walk from that. So the channel itself really does have to get to a point where it's like, okay, it's undeniable that this thing is blowing up. Yes, we can do this professionally for a living. So let's just do it. But for now, I'm just trying to focus on doing what I'm doing. You know, it ain't broke. Don't fix it. Let it be what it is. It's just slowly growing, slowly growing week by week. And um yeah, we'll see where it goes, man. I mean, a year from, it'd be great to be full-time a year from now. I don't know if that's realistic or not. I have no idea, but we'll just see where it goes. Yeah, and like, I, I was honestly glad to see that day where you're just like, not like internet famous, but just have that notoriety of like, yo, he's the just this dude who just like, you know, does this thing and does it very like authentically. Yeah, yeah. It's It's been, you know, that's, I think that's the part I enjoy the, well... I love hearing the music. I love music. And so I love hearing new music and, and enjoying that. But 
I really, really enjoy the fact that I can just sit here and be me. I don't have to do any, because anytime I feel like I have to react in a way, like I don't, I kind of don't like doing videos where I'm watching music videos because I feel a little more compelled to react since I've already heard the song. And so now I'm, I'm taking in something visually and even though people don't necessarily expect that from me, I do feel like I have to like, perform in some way. Yeah. Like you have to it's like a, put a face up and like, oh yeah. yeah. And I don't like that. It's an awkward feeling. And so what I really appreciated the most with the community around the channel is the fact I'm I'm just being me. And everybody's cool with that. And you know, if they're not cool with that, they leave and that's fine. <laughs> you know, like if you don't like it, don't watch it kind of. I think that's that's not a big deal to me at all. But it's been really, really nice to just really sit here and enjoy music and, and do my thing with the lyrics and try and interpret stuff and give my impression and, and see people enjoy that. And, and yeah, and just legit enjoy music and share that experience with other people. And it really is that simple. It's, it's great. Well, that's a great note to end off. Thank you very much for coming along and, you know, letting this conversation happen. Honestly, this could have been a whole conversation with the community on its own, to be honest. It kind of turned into a thing, yeah. <laughs>I mean, that's kind of the goal with this is just like have it like I want to say an interview, but I feel like that's just too formal and people are going to be like, oh, I have to like do this or whatever, like put on this formal face on. And I just feel yeah. like a conversation like that medium that you do is just like the conversation is just, just more relaxed and just more like almost compassionate in a way. Well, and, and also it's deliberate. Like I said before about how, you know, when I started the channel, there were certain things I wanted to do, certain things I did not want to do. And. You know, when you do an interview, that's very specific and it's it's very important. Like if you want to be a good interviewer, you got to ask good questions and you got to ask questions that these people you're talking to haven't heard before. Because that's what gets them interested. And that's what, oh, now, now the people watching the interview, they want to watch your interviews because they're going to hear something they have not heard before. And that's hard. That takes a lot it's of research. Very hard. Like I never that's interviewed hard. anyone like this is like doing this channel is the first time I've ever like try to put on an interview thing on. And it's really difficult because it's trying it's really hard being original and not trying to be Fantano. He are, I already have his having a conversation with, and I'm like talking to my friend, like, what am I going to do? Like, this just seems like I'm just copying pasting this and I'm trying to figure out a way how to stick out. Because if I try to go full research on this thing and like, Hey, I know your grandpa from 1920 or whatever, like Nardwar. I'm like, dude, I can't do that. Right. But see, and that's the thing. And that and that's a great point because yeah, that's what Nardwar does. He brings in all these obscure facts, things that throw the artists off. Like, how the hell did you know that? And that's hard to do. It's hard to research that kind of stuff. And so that's why I went that route too, which is more of a conversation setting rather than an interview setting. And then two. That's just more my style. Like, I don't, I want people to feel comfortable. You know, I want, I want, if JPEG Mafia ever sees any of my stuff, I want him, when I'm pestering him, to say, hey, come on, come on. I want him to look at my stuff and go, oh, this guy's chill. We're just going to chill for a while. I'm cool with that. You know, yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't like interviews where it's like they're shoving the microphone in their face and how come this, that, and this? That's, oh man, that's not cool. I don't like that. I'm not into that. Yeah. Like, Especially when you're interviewing like huge artists, you know, and that, that might be like kind of like pestering because I feel like they have to deal with that on a daily basis, like from their family or from their friends or from their fans or whatever. Like if I ever do get that Kendrick interview, I want to sit down and just have like a conversation and not have like analyze everything. Yeah, like, right. Exactly. And I, I feel the same way, too. And, you know, in terms of you and and trying to find your space in that interview world, it's hard to do. And the only thing I can you know, recommend or as far as advice is just be who you are because you've seen my, my things, you know, and they're small. I get a couple thousand views on them, you know, whatever, but I'm just doing what I want to do. And what I've been noticing lately is they're starting to get a little bit more traction. It seems like the discussions are getting a little bit better People are a little bit more interested. They're just getting a little bit more views. They're not blowing up, but it's just slowly building traction. And I haven't changed anything. Yeah. Just, you know, maybe maybe I'm getting a little better at it without realizing. 
maybe the people coming on are a little bit more inspired to come on because they see it's a, a consistent thing. I, I don't know. There's little elements that are at play that I'm not aware of, but the format has stayed exactly the same. You know, it's just a topic and a conversation one on one, kick it back, casual. That's it. Um, and I've stuck with that and I and I like it. And that's what it is. And it's easy for me to enjoy that because that's what I want to do. And so if it if it doesn't blow up, that's OK. But if it does blow up, that's the bonus. So that my advice to you after all that long winded talking, find the thing that you just you want to do. However it is, if it's interview, if it's casual, whatever, just fight, you know, kind of, it, it'll take a little while to figure that out. But once you get that figured out and you're just doing that thing that you like, just stick with it and then maybe it blows up. And then yeah. Maybe, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I don't have the intention of like this blowing up. My friends like figure like, yo, what if we get like revenue or whatever? Like he was like, what if we blow up or whatever? And I'm like, honestly, I'm doing what I like. I want to do. Like, I want to talk to the people who I want to talk to. Like, that's right. kind of the point of my thing. And like, you were just kind of one of them. And like, Professor Sky is on there. Fantano's yeah, on yeah. there. And like, oh my god, if Fantano asks like a question, like, so why did you steal my format in the first place? I'm just gonna be so like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not his format. It's not. This has been going on for thousands of years. Well, not thousands of years, but hundreds of years. Man, people just talking to each other. We're just. Do it in front of a camera now so that other people can see it. And uh, so he doesn't have any ownership of that. Oh, you know, yeah. Obviously, if, obviously, if Fantano is a huge fixture in the music, you know, online world. No debate there. But you just talking to people, man. Yeah, that, that's anybody can do that. Yeah. And I, I enjoy that. Like one of the things that kind of just wants me to go on with this channel is like tell stories and you know, stories are just always something that interests me because I love history and love just learning about people and their situations and their life experiences. It's just kind of like information and like experience that I cannot like, it's just priceless. It's something that you can't, you know, pay or you can't do anything. It's just sitting down with a person doing the most like primal thing and just communicating with another person, you know? Yeah. You know, I to me, you know, that sounds like your thing right there. I would, if I were you, I would sit and think about, okay, how can I get people to tell stories? Because if you can figure out a way, you know, not necessarily an interview, but if you can figure out a way to, to create some questions that ultimately lead to someone telling a story, you've got your thing. Yeah. That's what it is right there. Thank you. Yeah, man. Um, what was I going to say? It was something about like, um... Dang, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, that's, <laughs> that's a good thing this is not an interview, you know? Like, this is just a conversation. Yeah. But thank you very much for, like, you know, coming along with this. I really do, like, appreciate it. Oh, uh, it was fun. I'm glad we got to, got to meet up. I'm glad, uh, yeah, I'm glad we got to sit down and talk. That was fun, man. Yeah.